Good morning or good afternoon, pre-calculus classes. Reminder, you have a quiz due. Right here, it says... Right here. Quiz 5-2. It was a take-home quiz. given to you either in class or you could find it in its learning. It's due today, actually, but uh, you can turn it in before you leave class today. Today, we're going to lecture Law of Signs. Law of Signs is used to solve triangles. You're thinking, we've been doing that. But it's solve any triangle. Any triangle that is not a right triangle. So that's good news for you, because you were wondering, when was that going to occur? We're gonna do that method with law of signs. Solve any triangle. Solve any triangle. If you look at this picture here, it's not a right triangle. There's no indication of a right angle. If they had a right angle, they'd have to tell you there's a right angle. And since there's no there's no picture of a right angle symbol, or there's no detail that uh, something has 90 degrees, then you have to assume that it's not necessarily right. It's not that law of signs can't be used on other triangles, but you'll notice the difference. When a triangle is not right, it is considered oblique. Okay, oblique. A name you probably not have heard before. Law of signs is really easy, it, it, but it's only useful for triangles that you've identified in geometry as angle, angle, side. That means if you have a triangle with three angles, you had to have been given in advance perhaps one of the angles, two of the angles, and after that angle, a side. That would be angle, angle, side. Or you had to have been given a triangle, A, B, C, with an angle, and next to it, the side, and then next to that, another angle. Those are your two common uh, triangles you want to have. Angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. You may have seen those before in geometry when we were looking for congruence of triangles. There's a third. The, the, both, of those, both of those have two angles, but it it is possible, A, B, C, was to have a side, then the angle, then the side. Those are your three. Angle, angle, side. Angle, side, angle side, angle, side. Both of those have an included uh, component. Included means in between. This one has a side in between two angles. This one has an angle between two sides. Okay. What you cannot have, never, 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 is side, side, angle. Never, never, never can you have side, side, angle. That does not 
The problem is that does not limit you to only one kind of triangle. A triangle could be many, many places. You don't know how long any, uh, where that angle is going to land up. You only have one angle. And the formula is very simple. Notice across the street from each angle, A, B side, is the exact side, just like in geometry. Except capital A stood for the angle, small a stood for the side. Capital B stood for the angle, small b stood for the side. Capital C stood for the angle, small c stood for the side. And if you have that picture, this is the, the law of sines. Law of sines said that if you take the sine of that angle A and divide it by the side of A, it will be equal to the sine. It's a proportion now. It's a, it's a ratio. Sine of angle B over B, which is also true if you had sine of angle C over C. And if you don't like what you're looking at, you could flip them if you needed to, based on the scenario you have. You could put A over sine of A equals B over sine of B, which is the same thing as C over sine of C, because you're just taking the reciprocal of each. That comes in handy once in a while. That's what, what I look at. So I'm looking at number one. What am I given? I'm given a side angle, angle. That's allowed. Side angle, angle was allowed. Angle, angle, side is allowed. So I can, uh, I like to grab, let's see, if, if, you gotta label these. Um, this is unknown. That's unknown. And the side's unknown. But he's only looking for the side right here. So that side's unknown. So grab this pair. Grab that pair. Because it has something we know, something I don't know. So this is an example where I'll put my unknown on top. I'll put uh, x is to sine of 104 equals to. And then I'm going to grab the pair that's. I know both of them. Uh, 15 is to sine of 45. Sorry, 47 degrees. Multiply both sides by the sine of 104. Multiply by sine of 104. Sine of 104. Cross, cross it off. And that gives you, your answer is x equals to 15 times the sine of 104 degrees, all divided by the sine of 47 degrees. You'll have to pick up your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode before you even start this one, that's for sure. And calculate it out. And how many decimals will he want, she want? Nearest tenth. Should be a nice, only one decimal place. Well, one decimal place to a side length when you're talking about centimeters isn't too shabby. It's the nearest millimeter. So you'd have to also make sure after you've done that calculation you have to put, look for a side, centimeters. Okay, I'll let you key that in. You get an answer. And maybe if I come back to you, you can uh, see the answer and check it later. Number two. Again, we're looking for a side in feet a side and feet. 
I'm, I'm given an angle, side, angle. I have an included side, which is perfectly legal for law of sines. Law of sines. I just like the, the, the sound of that. Law of sines. And so, like I did before, if I'm missing this side, I'll match it up with its angle. I'll put the side on top, the unknown side. I'll put the sine of 42 degrees underneath it. And I'm going to pair it off with another pair that I do know. And I'll pair it off. Well, another pair I could use is uh, another angle. There's only one angle left. I'll use that one. I know what you're saying, but I don't have this angle. Yes, you do. You have that angle. You've always had that angle. Because we know all three angles have to add up to 180. So if I take 180 degrees minus the sum of 42 plus 63, that's 180 degrees. Minus a hundred and five. If I did the, the math right, that was 40. Can't see that number. Oh, lost my eyes are blurry. 42. 42 and, and 63 is 105. That turns into 75 degrees. So I'm going to put uh, the 28 feet over the sine of 75 degrees. Multiply both sides by sine of the 42, and that gives me x equals 2 sine of 42 degrees times the 28 divided by the sine of 75 degrees. That answer has to be in feet. So you do the math, maybe I'll come back to you and check your answers. Number three. Missing side again. And Again, it may behoove you to figure out what that side is, that angle is. We're given two angles, one that looks almost like a right angle. You see, it almost looks like a right angle, but it's not. It's, it's only it's 92 degrees, slightly off. Anyway, 180 degrees minus the sum of 92 degrees plus 65 degrees is 180 degrees minus, uh, how much is that going to be? 27 degrees? I think so. And that's a 153 degree angle. Why, why did I subtract? That was dumb. That was... Every once in a while, I'd love to say I did that on purpose, but I didn't. I subtracted those two. I need the sum. It says right there, sum. Why would I subtract? That gives me a 7, and then... A 9 plus 157. 157 degrees. That becomes 23 degrees. Does pay to double check your thoughts when you're doing it. So, my unknown 
goes with this one. That would be x over x over what? You better not put it over that side. You better not. It goes over the the crisscross of angle on the side. That was a trap. What I just showed you, I see people do all the time. It's the unknown side over this angle. X over sine of 65 degrees is equal to so I need an, another side with another angle. Now, did I need to find out this 23 degree angle? Did not need it. I could use it if I wanted to. Except for the fact, look what happens. If I choose to take this 23 degree angle and match it up with the side, it's an unknown side. Too much unknown. I can't have two unknowns. Look at I, well, I, I have another unknown. If I was to say the unknown side, I'll call, I'll call B over sine of 23 degrees. Notice what you have? I have two sides that are not known. That would be a, bra a, a grave mistake. Not too brave, but grave. So look ahead and say, oh, I need to have a pair. You say, well, why did I find that angle for? I don't know. Habit. Better be safe than sorry. At least I know the angle. In the future, you got to solve for everything anyway. So I'm going to put 11 centimeters over the sine of 92 degrees. And when you do all the math, you get x will be equal to... 11 sine of 65 over sine of 92 degrees. X will be in meters in this case. The nearest tenth of a meter is a decimeter. Definitely a few inches for sure. Okay. Number four, I have, this is an angle, side, angle. And will I need to find the missing angle? Since this pair with the missing, I need to use for sure, for sure, the only other two pairs I can use is this angle with that side, this side with that angle. Well, you'll never be able to know that side. So you have to find the angle. You are going to have to use that angle. There's no other way around it because you can never find the side across from 32. This is not a right triangle. You cannot use Pythagorean theorem. So now you know why I tend to sometimes just find that as those missing angles. So 180 degrees minus the sum of the other two, which is 57 will give you the missing angle. And it's big, it's obtuse, it's still bigger than 90. It's 123 degree angle. Okay, do the math, make sure I'm right. It is. So over here, 123 degree angle that I'm probably going to need. Okay? Here it goes, the fun. My unknown side over the angle across the street from it, well, not the angle, but the sine of that angle, 
sine of 35 degrees has to be, I need another side that I do know, I only know one side, so it makes, you, you know you only have one side, you're going to have to use the 180 rule. 14 over the 123 degree angle that I do, oh no, wait, don't get excited, Cartwright, the sine of 123 degree angle. X will be, multiply both sides by sine of 35 degrees, times the 14 over the original sine of 123 degrees that I found, the angle that I found. And that unit, there's no units, so you just have to have that answer. Number five, application problem. A plane begins a flight traveling 80 miles northwest. Well, here's north, here's south, here's west, here's south. If we start right here at the origin, I say an XY plane, that plane took off. 80 miles northwest. That would be this way. 80 miles. To avoid a storm, the plane makes a turn. Then makes a turn. Oh, then returns to the original location. Oh, they gave me a picture already. There it is made the turn and then it returns back and it does say something about it it doesn't give me a picture it doesn't tell me nothing else it made a turn and then went back to the original location so I'll draw in the same picture and so it helped that they gave one and they gave the angles they gave the angle of the turn that's 108 degrees. They gave the angle that it made from the beginning, 15 degrees. That was nice of them. So th their picture is prettier. Um, what do we want to find out? Good question. Find the total distance of the flight. Oh, okay total distance of flight, well, I, I went 80 miles this way, some miles this way, some miles this way. He's wanting me to find both missing sides and add those up to 80. It's a good thing I need uh, the third angle. So 180 degrees minus the sum of 108 plus 15. That's 123 degrees, if you add that up. 180 minus 123 is 57 degrees, so found it. So using that knowledge, to decide which of those I'm gonna find first. And uh, it'd be nice if I had a given pair that is complete pair, the angle and the side across. And since the 57 degree angle that I found is across the street from its corresponding side, that is a match. So now basically I can find, uh, I cannot, hold on here. I could find either X 
or I could find y, as long as I use that ratio that I know about. So, uh, x could go over the sine of 15, because these two match, and then the known side is going to be my uh, 80 miles over the angle that I found that based on that uh, 180 degree theorem of, of triangles, sine of 57. Therefore, x will be equal to sine of 15 degrees times the 80, all divided by the sine of 57 degrees. Now, y, let me do y now. y is to the sine of its corresponding would have been the 108 degrees. Sine of 108 degrees would have to be equal to that same fraction that we had with the known side of the uh, 57 degrees and the 50. I mean the 15 degrees, no, the 57 degrees and the 80 miles. So I get 80 miles over sine of 57 degrees. Y will be equal to multiply both sides by sine of 108. Sine of 108 degrees times the 80 divided by the sine of 57 degrees. Don't get excited, you're not done. X plus Y will equal to something. Um, okay, there's your first page of notes. Okay, if you wait a couple seconds, I'll let you check your work. Please let me know if there's any major mistakes I have made. All right, we're still going to use the law of signs. This time, pictures aren't given. You have to construct them yourself. And it doesn't hurt to pay attention to a few details. There's one pitfall. It's called ambiguous cases. It means that the situation you have could have more than one triangle. I may have mentioned this before, but the sine function and the cosine function always has to be between negative 1 and 1. It's an important fact. Angles with a positive sign can end up in, we've talked about that before, quadrant one, because all can be positive. Students is in quadrant two, so they can be positive in quadrant one and two. To find the other possible angles, we can subtract from 180 degrees. The sum of the angle measures in a triangle is always 180 degrees. And no, no triangle can have two obtuse angles. Can only have one obtuse. Can't have two because obtuse means greater than 90. So if, you, if an angle is greater than 90, we'll call angle one of a triangle was bigger than 90 degrees, and angle two was bigger than 90 degrees, even if it was 91 and 91. Well, 91 degrees plus 91 degrees already adds up to 182 degrees. We still have angle three left in a triangle that can't exist because we're already past the limit. 
So that's why we can only have one obtuse um, angle. All right, let's solve a couple of these here. Let's just draw what we see. It's just an ABC triangle. Doesn't matter what you give angle of A and B, C, to or side for that matter. And this would be side B. This would be side C. And this would be side A. So we're always going to just draw a triangle and pay attention to the details here. The measure of angle A, they say, is 60. So I'm going to put 60 degrees. That's here. AB, that means the distance between A and B, it will be 30 inches. So 30 inches. That happens to be side C. BC is this distance here. Happens to be side C is 27. BC is 27 inches. Find angle, measure of angle C. Find the measure of angle C. That's this here. Well, let me draw. There's the theta. This is different than the other problems we've done. We're missing an angle. So, but I still use the law of sines the same way. This time I'll say sine of theta. Or you want to call it sine of C or sine of theta. It's the same thing. I'll keep the C since it's named after the opposite side. So sine of C would be related to the 30. Then the pair that I have guaranteed is this pair here. They're both, the, the angle and the side is given, so you always need to have one solid condition. That would be sine of 60 degrees over this measurement of 27. So I'll, sign, I'll solve this for sine of C. Sine of angle C would now be equal to 30 all I'm doing is multiplying by 30 on this side and 30 on this side. It's 30 sine of 60 degrees over 27. Again, sine of C will be some number between negative 1 and 1. Whatever that fraction gives you then your job is to do the inverse sine. Remember, to get the angle out of there, I have to inverse sine to the right and left. Inverse sine. And when you get it done, that will be some angle. I'll let you finish typing that in. And if you're lucky, I'll give you some answers. Number seven. Um, and by the way, they did say check to make there could be other solutions. Um, once you found that uh, angle, whatever that angle is, you need to check to see if there's another possible angle that could be. I have found over the t my history that if I look for the biggest angles first, it always works out pretty well. You can find a good case that works and then work from there. All right, let me draw my ABC triangle for number seven. Doesn't matter what it looks like. A, B, C, and what's given, we know the measure of angle C is 89 degrees. We know AC has to be 34 meters, and AB was 26 meters. Find angle B. So we're looking for this theta right here. This works very similar to the last problem, because if you notice, 
the angle C and the side C is the pair that I have values for. So either way, I have to use that. I have to use that. I only have the other two that are will have a missing angle. So I'm going to set it up the same way. Sine of B, which is B's missing, over the 24, will be sine of C, which is 80 degrees, 89 degrees, over the 26. Sine of B will be 24. Sine of 89 degrees divided by 26. You do the math. Sine of B will be some number, some decimal number between negative 1 and 1. If you get an answer that is not a decimal number between negative 1 and 1, you're in trouble. Now, my advice to you is leave it in your calculator and just press inverse sign or arc sign of the answer that is on your screen and you'll have your your angle whatever that answer is do arc sign of the full answer inverse sign of that full answer number eight draw my triangle a, B, C, doesn't matter what order you put it in. And it has to be either clockwise or counterclockwise. But uh, either way, it's going to matter. A, B, C, A, B, C, it's the same thing. Measure of angle C is that's an obtuse angle. 102 degrees. A, C, 21 yards. A, B is 24 yards. Find the measure of angle B. So we're over here. We're finding that angle. Again, I had the same scenario. I have a, a set that is a, a pair that goes together. Then I have an unknown angle with a known side. So those go together. I always start out with what's not known. I don't know angle B, so I set it up as sine of B over the 21. Yards has to be sine of the 102 degree angle over the 24. That means sine of B will be the 21 times sine of the 112. 102, I mean, all over 24. Again, sine of B will be a number between negative 1 and 1, some decimal number. Do the second sign or inverse sign of that a whole answer will give you your angle in degrees. Do one more here, and I'll see if I'm tired. One more triangle, A, B, C, measure of B is 95 degrees, A, C, 34 kilometers, B, C is 21 kilometers. Find the measure of angle A, right here, finding that angle. Same scenario again. Sine of A over its known side of 21 has to be the sine of 95 over its corresponding side, 34. That means your sine of A is 21 times sine of 95 degrees over 34. Key that in. Sine of A will be some decimal number. Get rid of the sine by inversing sine both sides. 
So the inverse sine of that answer, that answer will be your angle in degrees. Now I'm going to draw you back. We just did four problems. And these rules were given for a reason. Because if at any time you do not get a number between negative 1 and 1 as the sine of the angle, that would mean that triangle does not exist. Okay? So I haven't typed anything in. That's your job. You need to verify that that number here is between negative 1 and 1. This number here is between negative 1 and 1. This number here is between negative 1 and 1. This number here is between negative 1. As soon as that happens that it's not, that triangle does not exist. Those numbers are all made up. The other thing is that there's also, they mentioned, check for other possibilities. Other possibilities would be we find an answer. Let's see. I think I'm going to go and look at what the answer is for number six. And then talk about the other possibilities of number six. I don't have a calculator handy, so I have to go and find a real calculator and type it in. So I'll be right back. Okay, for number six, apparently, the measure... Angle C is is seventy four point two degrees. You can check your your work to see if that's what you end up getting. Now that looks like a very good answer. You know when you think about uh, seventy four degrees point two degrees. Added to what we already knew of 60, that's 60.0, that adds up to 134.2 degrees. That leaves you some wiggle room to get to 180 for measure of angle B. It, it could exist. No problem. You could easily take... Uh, Well, where, where do you know that's less? 174. Did I add those up? 134. 134.2 is less than 180 degrees. That means there's room for a third angle. If you take the supplement, when we subtract from 180, it's called a supplement. So if I took... Uh, the 180 degrees and took away the answer that I think I found, 74.2 degrees, that leaves us, and I, got, I don't have my calculator, so I got to do it old school. And I know you love watching this. Oh, what happened here? Okay, I don't know why I did that. So that becomes an 8... That becomes a 5. That becomes a 105. So a 105.8 degrees works perfectly because if I take the 105.8 degrees and add it to the existing 60, that also gives me another triangle that I could use. Uh, one that adds up to 165.8 altogether. There is still room left over to find another angle. So that means this is a possible answer as well as our uh, 72, 74.2. So we have measure of angle C could also be, or the 105.2 degrees. There are two possible answers. Because both answers were, 
would add up to 60 just fine, leaving a, th a room for a third. That's where the ambiguous case comes from. It's, it is the more difficult case. Let, let's look at our answer for number eight. Let me go find out what we originally get with our work right here. Okay, I'm back. I looked it up. And angle B, the measure of angle B is 58.9 based on our work. So are there any other possible answers that could go with 58.9? Sure. The rules were take 180 degrees and subtract the 50 answer we get. See what that is. Uh, if I can do this in my head. Uh, one, it's a hundred and something. Let's see. A hundred and twenty one point one. Yeah. That gives me a 121.1 degrees is a possible answer. We say it's this answer. And we say, could it also be this answer well i'll tell you right now since they gave us an obtuse angle and this alternative answer is obtuse greater than 90 this one could not be a possible triangle okay so we don't have to worry about that one now as i said on number six both worked out fine. Both were uh, were acute angles. So, or actually, that one was one was obtuse, one was acute, but they both left room because the original angle they gave us was acute. So we had a lot of wiggle room to have two answers. Two different triangles could have been drawn. All right, I am. You need to double check on what this number is. And what this number is, make sure that they are between negative 1 and 1. You need to take your answer and take 180 degrees minus what you think your answer is. And compare what that number is. And remember that it, you're coming up with a, a, another angle. Since they gave us an acute angle, we probably have room. And this bottom one, number 9... It's not acute. So pay attention to number nine. I worry about number nine not having an additional alternate answer. Uh, um, number seven, I'm not worried about that per se, but do double check the measures. Finish this up. You've got just two more on there. I'm not going to do another couple. Uh, I will get room here ready for... I'll put my, my solution page here for you. Just please be honest and double check your work. Matter of fact, you have to do these two. To get full credit on this lecture notes, you have to do those two. I'm not going to give you those, those answers for sure. You just do them to get credit for your lecture notes. Pay attention to what I was saying. Two angles and numbers. Six were just fine, like I said. They're both good. Number eight. Cannot have two obtuse. Number seven. Look what I was telling you. The sign of that angle is not between negative 1 and 1. There's no solution. And then number 9. Again, you did not have a possibility of it being a valid answer. You still got these two to do. I'm not giving you the answers to those. For your homework... Let's see how big is it. One, two, three. Do the evens. 
evens is fine for everybody. Okay. Get to work. Four or five. Six, ah, you